so that's hydrogen. We've talked about hydrogen in tremendous detail. Hopefully it'll help you get through the homework. But we'll just spend a moment and talk qualitatively about some of the other elements. There's the hydrogen series up top with the red line converging towards the blue. But we looked at some of these in class the other day, and I pointed out each element has its own unique signature. So why do you think that is? Why do different elements have different spectral signatures, whether it's absorption or emission? It's one of the big differences from a particular type of atom, a particular element to another element. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Yes, okay. Yes, so the distance um, between the different energy levels will be different from atom to atom. Why would that be? Why would they be, say, more compressed or more, probably more compressed, let's say? Why would the orbitals be more compressed in different elements? Exactly. Exactly. Different elements have different nuclei, and the, if you remember, the thing I told you that defines an element as what it is, is the number of protons. So here we have helium and we have carbon. And again, nothing's to scale, you gotta keep that in mind, but in the helium we have two protons. Also got a couple neutrons in there, but they don't really matter. It's all about the number of charges. Here at carbon, we've got six protons, so six charges. So the gravitational analogy would be orbiting around a planet of different masses. Here, the electrons are orbiting around nuclei of different charges. And so the electromagnetic force is stronger, the electromagnetic field is more influential. And so the places where you have constructive and destructive interference will differ. It's not really shown well here, but all the orbitals are at different distances and will take different amounts of energy to transition between them. That's the primary difference. There's also another difference having to do with the number of electrons. If you have more electrons, you have more possibilities for transitions. Like we looked at neon, it has tons of lines. Well, one electron could transition or two of them could transition. Uh, one of them could ionize and the other one could transition. So you have more complicated possibilities. With hydrogen, it's one electron. Where is it going to go? Helium, you have two. Carbon, you have six. And you also have shielding effects. So imagine you're one of these outer electrons around carbon. You don't necessarily feel all six charges because between you and the nucleus are two electrons. And those two electrons effectively cancel out, or at least partially cancel out, the effect of two of those charges. So these electrons out here feel a different charge than the electrons closer in. Basically, I'm saying it can get really complicated and really quick. Each one will have its own unique signature because of the different complexities from element to element. So every element in the periodic table has its own unique absorption and emission line signature. But that's good. We can use that. If we see that particular signature out in space, we know what we're looking at. Okay, let's just review what we've spoken about here. Uh, we start with Kirchhoff's laws, and here they are again the different conditions to get continuous and absorption line and emission line spectra. Now that we understand that everything's made of atoms, and atoms have these properties where they can transition only between certain energy levels, then it kind of makes sense with the discrete spectrum. Again, we got the hot black body, the star, and it's emitting continuous light. If it's going through a cloud and the cloud is cool gas, that means the electrons down there in some lower orbital and there are certain energies that are permitted uh, to be absorbed so it can jump up to the various higher levels and you get an absorption line spectrum. But those atoms that absorb that energy are then hot gas. They've been heated, if you will. Maybe the whole cloud isn't much hotter, but those particular atoms absorb the energy. They're more energetic. And they will then transition back down to lower energy states, giving you an emission line spectrum. So that explains Kirchhoff's laws. He found them just empirically, but they're easily explained once you understand the nature of atoms. Okay, questions about anything atomic or spectroscopic? <laughs>